Most of my photography happens in the early morning, when the landscape hasn't yet revealed itself. My images are in black and white, so I'm not seeking colorful sunrises, even though I do find them. Instead, what I'm looking for is that suggestive atmosphere that the light creates at that time of day. The mountains and other elements of the landscape are still dark, and all that you can see is their shapes. They are just hinting their presence. This light helps me create the kind of images I like to make. Images that are more suggestive rather than descriptive. Images that leave a lot of room for imagination. Images that force the viewer to fill in the gaps. Images full of shadows. The shadows are a very important part of my images. I like to play with them to hide details of the landscape and even of my subjects and to reveal them in a suggestive way. The absence of detail can say as much, if not more, than its existence. This is known as ma in Japanese art. Negative space seen as positive, as something with presence. It's not created by compositional elements in the image, but it happens in the imagination of the viewer. It is the silence between the notes which make the music. I, I love that. These ideas inspire me a lot. You might know this image by Bill Brandt. You might remember that I showed it a few years ago here in this channel because it is the image that is behind all of my photography. It is this image that inspires most of my photography. It is all about those dark areas. It is all about revealing just what is essential. And this is what I attempt to do with my own photography. Consider this image. Most of the frame shows almost no details. It's all about those two white lines on the bottom left, and everything else is just shades of gray hinting the landscape and, of course, the fog. We don't need anything else, and in fact, adding anything beyond the essential would fundamentally change the image and its meaning. Look at this other one, a mostly black landscape, two dark peaks, some clouds, and a house in the middle of nowhere. The image suggests a forest, but we don't have the details. Not just because they don't matter, but because they would get in the way. It's about the relationship between the house and the mountains and the space in between them. The viewer chooses how to fill the rest. There are some things that we are going to be doing in post, some adjustments that we can use to emphasize this effect, but it all begins here, outside, in the field. That's why I like the early morning light, because it all happens naturally. I shoot my camera in automatic mode, usually in aperture mode, and that means that I choose the aperture, but everything else is up to the camera. The shutter speed, the ISO, I also use autofocus. And the camera usually does a pretty good job at exposing correctly, but there are some situations where we want to crush the blacks a little bit, where, you know, the camera is going to try to avoid doing that at all costs. To make sure that the camera and I are on the same page, that we want to do the same thing with the photograph, with the scene that we have in front of us, I use the exposure compensation dial to override the natural tendency that the camera has to not want to underexpose the shadows. I usually use exposure compensation anywhere between negative 0.3 and negative 1 stop. That way, I keep my shadows dark, but never pitch black. Then in post, I play with those shadows. I play with how much I want to reveal and how much I want to hide. In this image of this arch, I had plenty of information in the shadows, but I decided to hide them, to darken them, to just show some details here and there. This way, there was more room for that lit-up part that you can see on the right side of the frame. It stands out more. That lit-up part balances out the sun on the left side of the frame. And it also reveals just enough about the nature of the arch and the rocks it's made of. In this very recent image of mine, I could have chosen to show a lot of detail in the trees in the background. But by darkening those trees, the contrast between the forest and the dry land increased, and it also left more room for the main subject of the image, that was the dead tree in the water. This is yet another example. Here, by revealing the shadows little by little on a gradient, the viewer is guided through the frame 
towards the main subject in the middle of the image, which, by the way, is hidden in part behind the fog, and you might think that I had no choice that the elements were that way that day, but that is not the case. I took plenty of shots of this scene. I could have chosen a different one, one showing a more visible and more clear peak, but I really like the suggestive nature of the final image I chose. It's not just a peak, it's one that rises above the clouds and above the fog. As I said, this is something that is done mostly in the field, in camera, but there are a few tools that we can use in post to emphasize this effect. To crush the blacks, it can be as simple as playing with those shadow and black sliders. Another very simple but effective tool is the vignette. Then we have gradients, something that I personally use very often to guide the viewer through the image. We can also use the brush or more complicated selection tools, whatever we can use to select and isolate those parts of the image that we want to darken. Something we might want to avoid is to interrupt those deep shadows with distractions, so the healing tool uh, can help us removing those. And lastly, the tone curve, probably the least important of all of these, but it's just the cherry on top. Because I like the deep shadows in my images, those can be very, very dark, almost pure black. That could create very high contrast, almost too much, so to mitigate that, I use the tone curve. I raise those blacks by two, three, four points, so they still hide those shadows. There is no information being revealed, but they are not as dark. It's almost like decreasing the dynamic range of the final image. Again, it's just a little detail, but I find it to make my images slightly better. As you can see, the shadows play a very important role in my photography. Not only they empower everything else in the frame, but they can come alive on their own. I hope this video showed that and gave you some ideas to play with. As usual, there is no magic rule here, so you'll have to experiment with your own images, with your own photography, and find your sweet spot. Before letting you go, I just wanted to thank all of my patrons for their generous support. In case you were not aware, I have a Patreon page where I host a weekly live stream where we talk all things photography, and I also share some exclusive content on that page, like my latest ebook, How to Make Square Images. Today I wanted to showcase and highlight the work of Mohamed, a very talented photographer from Qatar and one of my patrons. I'm gonna leave uh, links in the description down below to his Instagram account, to his YouTube channel, and his uh, website. All right, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Something we might want. As you can see, the shadows play a very important role